So while everyone yet cannot get One UI 7, Samsung have just dropped the first beta of One UI 8. So this means if you have the S25, the S25 Plus or the S25 Ultra, you can download this now by going to the Samsung Members app and just looking for that beta program banner. And if you are in the US, the UK, Germany or South Korea, you can go ahead and get this. And if it hasn't appeared for you just yet, then just kind of hold on because there is a lot of people trying to get their hands on this One UI beta now. So just keep refreshing that Members app and then you should be able to get it. However, a couple of things to note though, if you want to download the One UI 8, beta onto your S25s. It is a beta, so make sure you back up all your data beforehand because you could lose it if you install the One UI beta. And remember, as it is a beta, it means that things might just not work as you expect them to do. So if this is your everyday phone and you rely on it for everyday tasks, maybe you might want to skip downloading the install. And if you do want to go ahead and do that install and you want to risk it, then it's a three gigabyte file. So you just need to make sure you've got enough space on your phone. And for those of you that don't want to risk losing using all the data on your phone or just having these weird bugs that come with a beta, then I'm gonna run you through some of the things that I've noticed in the first couple of hours of me having this One UI 8 on my phone. But this is, like I said, only a first impression. So if you want some more up-to-date information, head over to the Android Authority website where you'll get everything that you need. First off, let's start with some changes to the now bar, and there's two of them here. So the first one comes when you enable do not disturb because now this will show on your lock screen, which I think is a really nice addition. So you can actually see that your phone might be silencing notifications if you turn this on by mistake. And that second change is that now you can see phone calls on that now bar. So what it'll do is it'll show you exactly who is calling and it'll show you the duration of the call, but you still have that notification on the lock screen anyway, that's at the top where it used to be. So maybe in a future beta, they will remove that notification, but still you can now get calls and see it on the now bar. Sticking with calls actually, and if you record a phone call, there's a new place that you will find that recorded call. You can now find those recorded calls directly in the contacts page of the person that you called. And I like this because it makes it much easier to organize and keep track of those call recordings rather than going into the call log history and having to search for the call based off that. Another change that I noticed in the One UI 8 beta is to multitasking. And this is something that Google said that they were going to introduce, but Samsung seems to have beat them to the post here. And it's introducing the 90-10 multitasking split. So when you open two apps in split screen, you can now resize one of the apps to make them smaller and kind of like less visible. So you can focus on that main app. So essentially pushing it to the edge of the display. Then to swap the apps around, you just tap on the smaller, almost hidden app and it will jump to swap those two around, meaning that one just replaces the other. And this is a really nice little multitasking upgrade. And it just lets you see more of what you're doing on that main app screen. And I kind of think that it should have just always been this way. And it just should have been the way multitasking always works. I really like this one. Now let's jump into some changes with the calendar and there's nothing massively dramatic here but there is a nice little addition inside of this. At the bottom of the calendar app you'll notice that plus icon and when you now tap that plus icon you'll see a slightly new revamped screen that lets you create an event as usual as you normally would for your calendar but you can now create a reminder directly in the calendar app meaning that there isn't a separate action needed to create a calendar for the exact same day. It, it's really nice this, and you can set a reminder for any specific time you want. And I just think that this is really useful when you know you'll need a reminder for an event, but that reminder doesn't necessarily mean that you need to create an event in the calendar. It's just really useful. Talking of the Reminders app, this has had a slight overhaul here as well. So when you go to create a reminder in that quick menu, the phone will now suggest names for the reminder and a time for that reminder based off previous reminders that have already been created within the app. There's also an option to use sample reminders. So things like workout schedule, pickup reminder, and also a grocery list, which Samsung say is now just easier to manage your important tasks in life. Sticking with slight UI changes, there's been a bit of a revamp here to the Samsung Weather app in One UI 8 Beta 1. Now this isn't a massive revamp at all, but you will notice that the animation showing you the current weather has slightly changed at the top of the display. And it's a little bit more richer, a little bit more involved than it was in One UI 7. Now, if you compare them side by side, you'll be able to see that the images here are just a lot more fun. They're a little bit more detailed and it does let you see exactly what the weather is looking at. If for some reason you can't look out your window. QuickShare has also got a bit of a visual overhaul when you want to receive and send a file. There's a really nice new screen with an animated background that tells you that you are ready to receive files. 
it will tell you what your name will appear as in that top middle of the display. And if you tap on the settings option, this is where you can change exactly who can share with you. So you can choose between those options of no one, contact only, or everyone. And then you can still set this to that limit of 10 minutes. And then there's a new addition to wallpapers. If you go into the wallpaper settings, there's a new option now for dynamic wallpapers. And there's currently two to pick from. A blue to green gradient that goes from top to bottom or one that has more of a circle to it. These dynamic wallpapers will change over time and if you tap into them it gives you a quick animation of the subtle changes that will happen throughout the day and at the moment you can't edit them so you can't change the colours or anything yet with these but this is something that is a nice addition. Another slight change is to the camera but don't get excited because it's nothing dramatic. Previously when you swiped up or down what it would do is it would change from the rear camera to the selfie camera or vice versa but now doing that same action will get you to the quick settings just a little bit quicker you do have to turn this on in settings so it doesn't replace the original changing camera action but it is a nice little addition if you're someone who's always trying to get to those settings just a little bit quicker sticking with small changes there's a little update to the menu inside samsung internet so when you click the hamburger icon you'll see a redesigned settings panel that also gives you a slight blur against what is now being shown on that web page behind the settings and if you ever used AI select you'll have noticed that there's always a bit of a delay between selecting it and then being able to actually select something on the display but now Samsung have updated this so now when you select AI select you can actually select something instantly and thankfully they've now got rid of that delay. Now they are some of the bigger changes that you might notice in the first couple of hours of me using the One UI 8 Beta 1 but there's also a couple of smaller things that you might want to know about. You now have separate biometrics for your secure folder. There is Galaxy Buds control integration for older Galaxy Buds and One UI 8 supports Buds 2 Pro and for us we tried this with the Buds Live as well and it didn't seem to work with them so hopefully this will come to future betas. Another change is when you have multiple notifications from a single app the app number now appears in a blue bubble next to the sender name rather than at the side like it used to do. You can now have bigger Samsung widgets which takes up four rows instead of three and inside that routines app there is now control for things like notes and calendar which didn't used to be there at all in One UI 7. And the UI seems to have changed ever so slightly in the Files app with smaller, more rounded icons than the bigger ones that were here in One UI 7. And if you want to search downloads, you can now filter by app as well. Now, I'm sure there is loads more to One UI 8 Beta 1 that I haven't covered in this video, but I've only been playing with it for a couple of hours. So if you want to see anything else that we might find, head over to the Android Authority website because we'll be updating the website there with everything that we might find. And I know there is still one question left. When is this going to be coming to all? devices well I actually have no idea so the S25 Edge doesn't seem to be getting this just yet and neither do the Z Fold and Flip 6. Let me know what you think of the One UI 8 Beta 1 in the comments below. Is this a nice little overhaul or you're a little bit disappointed by what Samsung have actually given us here? Let me know in the comments before you head off as well make sure you subscribe to the Android Authority channel and if you do that then I'll see you in the next video.